This is Strictly Business. We talk Zambia's bilateral relations. How much bargaining power is Zambia going to have with all these bilateral relations that it has? Do we have limitations to this? Do we have uh, advantages? What are they? And how much is too much? We'll be talking that with an expert in studio. Then we also talk uh, diversification in a business. How important is it? What are you supposed to look out for? And how are you doing it if you're doing it correctly? We will also be talking about Grinite being taken to the next level. This is Strictly Business. Thank you for joining us. Gordon Mapulanga is a diplomat and a lecturer at NIPA. He joins me as we talk bilateral relations. Thank you so much for joining us on Strictly Business. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Thank We've you. been seeing a lot of deals, social, economic, elaborations, collaborations with Zambia and many you know, foreign entities, starting with just home, locally, the Congo, South Africa, Botswana, then we go even further. There's been a lot signed with the EU. Firstly, let's start with the importance of bilateral relations, be it social or economic, to uh, the development agenda of a country. Of course, it is very important in that uh, no country exists as an island in the first place. Uh, in essence, international relations entails that each and every state is supposed to stand on its own and survive on its own, but it has been found not to be very possible. So in that regard, uh, every state intends to engage into uh, relations with others. Okay. So Zambia uh, has also been engaging in these bilateral relations since independence. Uh, but uh, of course there have been shifts in the way Zambia has been relating with international entities. Starting from uh, 1964, uh, Zambia's uh, foreign policy mm -hmm. uh, interests were more focused on uh, the liberation movements uh, in the southern region, notably UNITA, SWAPO in Namibia, in, in, uh, in ANC in, Zimbab in South Africa, ZANU and ZAPU in Zimbabwe, uh, and so on. Then um, uh, between 1972, and uh, 1991, Zambia was uh, more focused on uh, left-wing politics. So, okay. meaning yes, w w with that background you've given, yes. it makes me, you know, it reminds me that mm. you know the vice president was in uh, Indonesia, yes. and she was talking about the shift from uh, leaning leaning to you know the more developmental bilateral relation yeah. as opposed to the political. Yes. But when you look at how many we've had, how do we maximize on them, first of all? Uh, first of all, we have achieved a lot at political diplomacy level mm -hmm. in that uh, we are now a stable democracy. And as you know, uh, most countries that are developing and at a faster rate now are democratic in nature. Okay. Yes. The, the thin line between um, being independent, having to maintain your sovereignty and also now having these bilateral relations. That thin line where now you think without these bilateral relations, are we able to do anything? And then now with being a global village? Yes, of course, uh, we're talking about uh, being in a position to bargain. Mm -hmm. So where sovereignty is concerned, it's not a secret that uh, at one point sovereignty has to be compromised. You need to lower down a bit for you to achieve what you want. So um, African countries, Zambia inclusive, uh, are on this, the receiving end where sovereignty is concerned because um, in the first place, the struggle has been ongoing since the early 60s to stabilize politically uh, as well as socially. Also uh, within domestic uh, jurisdictions, you realize that uh, most African countries have not been stable at ethnic level including politics. So uh, it's now that most African countries are stabilizing politically. And uh, this is now helping other political entities that have interest in these African countries now to uh, engage in bilateral okay. relations so that uh, they can uh, spur some, 
social and economic development. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to, you know, uh, a lot of scholars have spoken about when they're trying to just ease the language of what's going on with, with bilateral relations yeah. regards, you know, investment, especially yeah. foreign investment. Yeah. I'll give the example of the mining sector. Yeah. A lot of, when it comes to the bargaining power, yeah. a lot of scholars have spoken of when that contract is being signed, when those, you know, uh, minutes of the MOUs and all those are being done, the bargaining power, how should we then make sure that when we put that ink to paper, we, yes, are getting Forex and getting the foreigners coming through to invest in our countries, but we also have the winning power in as much as we want them that bad. Uh, I think uh, historically what has uh, happened uh, we, we, as regards the mining uh, bargaining power, uh, in the case of Zambia, there's been a lot of desperation to bring in investors in the mining sector. So in the early 90s, Zambia was in a desperate position in that uh, most uh, m uh, mining investors were not able to come and invest in the country because the infrastructure was almost at zero. And uh, that was very difficult to come and invest. And as such, we were in a very uh, weak bargaining power. Uh, but presently, I think um, we have stabilized now and uh, we are at an, an advantage. Um, with uh, the, the kind of uh, president that we have now who is more focused on uh, economic recovery, I think we are in a stronger b bargaining power because we have heard of him pronouncing um, aspects to do with uh, partnering with foreign investors. So if also pa partnering will be a, an aspect in the, in, in the mining sector, that would be very good. So we are now in a stronger bargaining power as regard to um, our sovereign head of state who is uh, also um, in the forefront of ensuring that uh, Zambia benefits. Because, you know, minerals are, are non-renewable. So uh, if we do not gain now, when will we ever gain? Because they are depleting. What will remain with will only be the soil. Very true, yes. very true. Mm. Another conversation we'll go in is diversification. Yeah. But I appreciate Thank you so much for coming through. Indeed. Gordon Mapulanga, diplomat and lecturer from NIPA. You are watching Strictly Business. This is Waterlight, developed by the Colombian renewable energy startup Edina. It's a revolutionary lantern that generates light and power by using one of the most precious natural resources on Earth, the sea. This is Strictly Business, and we get into our business segment where we are featuring uh, Pasco Simwanza. He is the founder of Pascom Innovations. Thank you so much for coming through. How are you? I'm good, thank you, and thanks for having me. All right, Pascom Innovations. What is it all about? Okay, so Pascom Innovations Limited is um, a youth-driven printing and uh, branding company, and it's based in Lusaka. Um, yeah, just in the CBD. All right, that's just to give the context to our viewers of how we're now going to get into, you know, uh, the, the issue of most businesses when they get into, you know, uh, the SME stage, they're getting balance, they've got their uh, uh, book balances and bank balances running and smoothly, they know they've got informal and they're getting business. But for you, you shift from printing and start also adding other things. When you talk about, um, a business being saturated, first of all. People talk about printing being saturated. How do you overcome that? First of all, um, I think it's important to dispel that uh, assertion because uh, printing is a very dynamic business. So the, the only challenge that we have at the moment as a country is that um, a lot of people uh, view printing as a mono you know, type of business. but. Like I said earlier, it's a very dynamic, you know, uh, venture that includes uh, designing, graphic designing. You need to do printing, and also you need to do the finish up, which is called branding. So now, um, if you are to now open it up, well, designing, graphic designing is so vast a business, just on its own. And so if people talk about uh, uh, printing business being saturated it simply means that they are limiting their the, the way they view at, uh, you know this important topic 
Uh, however, from our point of view, as Pascom Innovations Limited, we look at printing as a very, very vast, uh, you know, a venture that uh, it should be viewed as, 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 as a very important and integral, you know, aspect in governance and also in uh, economic development of this country. All right. Yeah, also big on partnerships. And, you know, for us, we, we, we choose to speak to you because um, you are an entity that's in the SME range, but yeah, you're sure. into partnerships, you're into social corporate responsibility. So these, for the stage that you're at for your company, how do you treasure them? Let's start with the partnerships, first of all. Okay, so the strength really uh, in business lies in partnerships. And we are happy that the new done government has been clear on this subject. Uh, the president himself has been uh, talking uh, about this important uh, aspect of doing business where people should come together. You know, they say divided we stand, and uh, I mean we divided we, 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 f we fall, mm -hmm. and uh, united we, we stand. stand. Uh, I think that is to say that uh, uh, there is power in numbers. Power in numbers indeed. And for, you know, the stage that your company is at, you still think of social corporate responsibility. Most people will say, I'm only going to start thinking of social corporate responsibility when I'll become a, a multinational company. But for you, you're not waiting for that. Why? For social corporate responsibility. Okay, so first of all, it's important to appreciate that uh, we are operating in an environment, and this environment belongs to government. Okay, so one of the things that government expects from the private sector, like ourselves, is to be seen to be a helping hand uh, of government. And uh, we are proud uh, when we are given an opportunity to, to, to help in, in any way possible, because it's our responsibility. It's patriotic to do that. All right. Yeah, sure. well. Pasco um, Simwanza is the founder of Pascom Innovations. We've been interacting with him on uh, the Binet segment. This is just to show that even at a level of SME stage, uh, Pascom Innovations is embracing partnerships. It's also embracing um, social corporate responsibility, not waiting to reach uh, levels of multinational uh, levels. So now let's get to our corporate news where we're going to be engaging uh, news in the corporates. Thank you so much, Pascal Hoka. <laughs>
on board or go ahead with um, digitizing their businesses because they would like to see what has already happened in the past or they want to you know on board uh, as a second layer or third layer because they want to ensure that it's something that has been experienced by all but what we ensure to do is that we handhold the process for all the SMEs. We handhold the process, we, we, we move with them. We are alive to the fact that, um, especially the smaller organizations, they want to see uh, businesses uh, move um, uh, with, uh, they want to see businesses that have already uh, onboarded uh, the services that we provide or services that have been provided, especially in the digital space. But what we do is we handhold the process, we move with them, we, we solution services that, uh, and that will enable their businesses to grow and to ease their operations. Okay. Yes. So you must be excited when you see, uh, you know, entities like the gentleman I'm just from talking to, Pasco. Yes. Yes. where you know they're so enthusiastic about you know operating not only they're already formal but you know they're they open to a lot of things that most people would deem as uh, what huge companies are doing isn't it, it yes. makes you feel good doesn't it definitely okay so um, entrepreneurs and investing in technology mm -hmm. I mean you've shared the, the benefits of digitizing but how is this journey possible smoothly for those who are still the doubting Thomases you're talking about out there we understand that there are larger, uh, there are larger entities and the smaller entities there, uh, uh, you know, um, that would like to have these businesses running um, on their end. So we handhold the process uh, from start to finish. We also make sure that we not only just handhold the process, but even as we're solutioning, we publicize what we are doing for them to be able to understand how it benefits them as an organization. Okay, all right. So in regards to just, you know, digitization and the experience that you've had, the interactions that mm -hmm. you've had, what would you uh, tell the entities out there, especially the, the MSMEs, okay. in, or in an overall to just blanket our conversation? Technology is evolving. Every day it evolves. We also don't just sit back and wait to see it evolve. We, ev we evolve alongside um, the technology that's evolving. And we also just want to make it known to everybody that you are going to move with technology that will enable your business. And it's all encompassing. It's, uh, it gives access to universal access to all the SMEs. Uh, okay. All right. Um, Esna Zulu, thank you so much. Esna Zulu Sikazui, thank, thank you, you so much for coming through to uh, Strictly Business and appreciate your voice on, you know, issues of technology in our country. We know you're, uh, you're vast in the country and how you collaborate with other partners is also something that we're looking at as a country and we appreciate thank you so much thank you for having me all right appreciate it this is uh, strictly business we'll be getting into our abstainment and this time we are going to meet uh, Thelma now Thelma is working granite in a very vast manner she first uh, started uh, using granite on uh, kitchen tops and now she's going to use granite on the tombstone. Yes, being female, everyone is going to be thinking, well, what's going on here? Let's listen to her story. We get to understand how she's diversifying her business and uh, her journey towards uh, making this a reality. And uh, Thelma, Mulind uh, thank you so much for coming through. And uh, I want very interesting name first here, Themwa Homes founder. Themwa, is it two, combination of two? Yes. All right. Okay, tell yes. us about that. It's a combination of my first name, which is Thelma. Mm -hmm. Then Mwa, it's my middle name, Mwansa. Okay. All right. Yes. You've used granite from not just uh, kitchen tops all the way to tombstone. Now, diversifying in a business, that's good. But, you know, this way to that way. Tell me how the journey was from talking about kitchen tops all the way to the tombstones. Yeah. Because I had worked with uh, uh, different companies that okay. used to deal with the same kind of materials. Okay, what so were you doing before you got into your business? I was actually working. All right, uh, as a the sales profession? person. Oh, okay, I'm an accountant. Great. All right. Yes, I did my diploma from NIPA. Okay. Yes. So uh, I thought of uh, starting to introduce, like, using the same materials that we were using for kitchen units. Mm -hmm doing staircases like what we do doing tombstones because like we are a lot in the market and for you to have like to keep going in the business 
you need to have a lot of variety. Like people shouldn't just come for one item. At least you, you have staircases. Of course, we are now introducing pavers for granites. granites. All right. Yes. So for you, weren't you a bit um, skeptical? And I'm talking this like an inspirational story because there are a lot of uh, MSMEs out there who are a bit skeptical and they become nervous to say, wow, kitchen tops are working. If now I get to get to that one, then it doesn't work. It will eat up the money that we've made already. How was it for you? Uh, for me, like how I started the business, it wasn't on an easy thing because I lost the job. Then I told myself, instead of starting to look for a job elsewhere, and I was working as a salesperson to make someone's money. Why can't I use the same knowledge of doing this same business for myself and make for myself something? And of course, creating employment to some people. So I thought of uh, venturing into the same business because of uh, the interest I had, of course, with the passion and loving what I was doing. And I had clients in the same industry. So I thought it would do me more better. Tell me about that, that moment where you're doing kitchen tops. How did the granite for tombstones come in? Because, these are, yes, they're using the same materials, but someone would say that's a totally different <laughs> business idea. Yeah. Uh, uh, the way it came is uh, because we use uh, uh, same materials. Yes. So when you're doing business, you have to be creative. You have to, like, really know what you want. You look at the problems that people are facing. Like in, uh, in our country, Zambia, We've got a lot of people that do tombstones. They are mostly like uh, investors. Mm -hmm. So I thought of also us as table homes would do the same because the same investors are using us Zambians to do the tombstone. So instead of uh, getting from investors, even us as table homes would, we can still do it. OK. Yes. How, how big is your team? We are quite big. We are about eight now. And how many were you when you started? When I started, I was just by myself. All right. Yeah. The challenges that you faced as you were uh, getting through to, you know, diversification process, just every day running of the business. The challenges that I faced, like it wasn't easy to convince clients. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you're starting, like people need to believe in you. So very few people that had believed in what I was doing. And it was a very difficult time to convince clients for them to start getting the materials from me. But with time and with uh, the quality work that we were delivering to the first customers, it was uh, like it became more like our marketing process. So like people started coming through recommendations because of the quality work that we were delivering to our customers. OK, so what trick did you use then? It's about. Uh, uh, what I use? What trick did you use to, you know, for them to start now believing in you, for, for them to start, you know, just coming through and say, all right, okay. As someone um, who's done accounts, I've, and I've been brought up in a business family. So when you're talking to clients, you have to be creative. You need to have confidence. Like you need to know the language to use to the clients for you to win that client for the clients to, to have win confidence. Win them over, right? Yes. So if there's uh, somebody watching out there and they're saying, wow, Thelma left her, her, her day job and I'm, I'm skeptical. I want to get into something I'm passionate about, like she's saying. What can you tell them? What I can tell them, it's um, I can encourage them like to become innovative instead of uh, waiting for them to be employed because we've got a lot of educated people out there who are yet to get employed. They would uh, use the opportunity, like if they've got talent, discover who they are. When they discover who they are, they should know what they really want in their life. They should uh, become innovative by creating the jobs for themselves, of which can even give opportunity to other people. Like they can create jobs like what I have done. All right. Thelma, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much. Okay, so Strictly Business today has been a little bit more inspirational, especially when it comes to the MSMEs. We've spoken about um, MSMEs getting involved in corporate social responsibilities, MSMEs getting involved in issues of, you know, just um, making sure you diversify your business, 
head on with competition and of course we went into the world of digitalization and how these MSMEs should embrace this and most of all we spoke about Zambia's relations when it comes to uh, maximizing on the bilateral relations. Thank you so much.